In this video lecture, we're going to look at blood flow and blood pressure and the factors that affect both blood flow and blood pressure. So we're going to start with blood flow first. Blood flow is affected by both pressure and resistance. So blood flow we're going to define as the volume of blood flowing through a vessel in a given period of time. We know pressure is a force that's pushing or exerting on the wall of the vessel. And resistance is going to be a measure of the amount of friction that the blood encounters. So in this equation, you can see the relationship of these three things. Here, blood flow equals a change in pressure. Remember, the triangle here represents is delta, so it represents change. And the R is resistance, so it's a change in pressure over resistance. So if I think of the change of pressure, basically the pressure at the beginning of the vessel, the pressure at the end of the vessel, how big a gradient or change in pressure is there. So I can affect flow by either changing pressure or resistance. So for example, if I increase pressure, that's going to increase flow. Or if I decrease resistance, that would also increase blood flow. Now typically blood pressure pertains to the regulation of adequate blood flow. That is, we're going to alter blood pressure to be able to maintain blood flow. So if I want to maintain blood flow, then I might have to increase pressure in when resistance has increased. Or I might have to decrease pressure when resistance has decreased. Okay? Or vice versa. I could say if I need to maintain blood flow, I might have situations where maybe blood pressure has decreased, so I need to decrease resistance as well, and that would help maintain blood flow through those tissues. If pressure went really high, then I'm going to need to increase resistance in order to keep the same blood flow through that tissue. So blood pressure is typically measured in the artery, so we'll look at arterial blood pressure. It's measured in millimeters of mercury, and you can see here the values we see in a typical artery. A person's blood pressure on average is 125 over 75 or 120 over 80, depending. It just depends on the person. The 125 in this diagram refers to the systolic pressure, so that's the pressure while the ventricles are insistently pushing that blood out of the heart. The diastolic pressure is the 75, so that would be the pressure while the ventricles are relaxed, so there's no forceful exiting or ejecting of blood out to those arteries. The difference between systolic and diastolic pressure is sometimes referred to as pulse pressure, so that's 125 minus 75, so in this diagram the pulse pressure would be 50. A person's considered to be hypertensive if they have a blood pressure greater than 140 over 90, and then hypotensive if they have just a low blood pressure, but we can't really put a value on that easily since different people have different normal blood pressures. As I look at the blood pressures as it moves through the different blood vessels moving farther and farther from the heart, you can see quite a bit of things going on here. First of all, blood pressure is always going to be greatest closest to the heart. So right here at, time, at this side would be the location of the heart. And so you can see as the pressure, as we move away from the heart, that blood pressure generally drops, both in the systemic circulation and the pulmonary circulation. Blood flow, remember, always goes from areas of greater pressure to lesser pressure, so that's the drive that's pushing the blood along through all of those vessels. Also notice that initially when the blood leaves the heart, you have a very large pulsating pressure. So you get the measurements of the systolic and diastolic measurements. That pulsating pressure, notice, declines as you move farther and farther from the heart to until you finally get to the venules and veins where the pulsating pressure has dissipated. You no longer see it. Also notice that the biggest drop in pressure is in the arterioles. Now, since, they, since this has the largest drop in pressure, it also has the largest resistance to blood flow. Remember, we're trying to maintain constant blood flow. So if I have a big drop in pressure, so I have a big change in pressure, 
I need a big change in resistance, or a big resistance, I should say, to help maintain blood flow. So arterioles have the biggest resistance to blood flow, and because of this, we're gonna use those arterioles to help control blood flow into different tissues. Also notice the drop in pressure in the capillaries isn't very big, and overall the pressure is rather low. That's good because remember the capillaries are only endothelial tissue. There's not much supporting structure in, a blood in the capillaries, and so therefore um, you're going to risk of um, damaging them if the blood pressure was any higher. Notice also that the vein pressure is even that much lower, so that's all the reasons why we need all those structures like the respiratory pump and the skeletal pump to help move blood back up into uh, the heart because the pressure is so low in those veins. The final thing I want you to notice is that notice the pulmonary pressures are much lower than the systemic pressures. This is for two reasons. One is that the pulmonary pressure has a much lower resistance. Um, the lumens, the inside tube of the arteries and veins of the pulmonary cir circulation is much larger, so there's less friction, so less resistance. And there's a shorter blood vessel length. It only has to go to the lungs and back, so we don't need a huge pressure in order to get that blood out to the lungs and back. Now, when we look at resistance, Resistance is going to be affected by several different things. Again, just think of resistance as the resistance to the, of the blood vessels to friction. So anything that builds up friction is increasing resistance. So one of the things we can see that affects resistance in this equation here is N, which is viscosity. Remember, viscosity is basically how thick your blood is. So an increase in viscosity, like someone who has polycythemia, which is abnormally high levels of red blood cells, if you remember, that means you've got an increase in resistance. If I decrease viscosity, so I decrease this N, like in anemia, then that's going to lower resistance. Length also plays a role. Length is, increase in length is also gonna cause an increase in resistance. You we're not going to be able to regulate resistance with that simply because we can't change the length of our blood vessels in response to changes in resistance. But that can come into a factor for, say, people who are obese, um, where you've got to have blood vessels serving that fat tissue. And so they've got a lot more blood vessels, which means a lot longer length of the total blood vessels throughout their body. And that could end up increasing resistance. Um, which then is going to cause for an increase in blood pressure in order to maintain blood flow. Diameter is the biggest effect that we see on resistance. Um, you can see down here it's in the denominator and notice it's to the fourth power. So just a small change in radius is going to have a large effect on resistance. So if I increase the radius, that is make the blood vessel bigger in diameter, then that's going to decrease resistance. And a lot of this has to do with what's called laminar flow versus turbulent flow. Laminar flow, you can see here, is typically seen in a large vessel where the blood flowing along the edge of the blood vessel has the greatest amount of friction. The blood flowing in the middle, though, has the least amount of friction. And so as long as the blood vessel is large, there's just a slow decrease in the amount of friction as you move to the middle, but the blood flows in, in a kind of a linear fashion along the blood vessel. Now, in smaller diameter um, blood vessels, or when there's an abrupt change in a blood vessel, that's when you have more what's called turbulent flow. Imagine if there's some blockage, maybe that's a, a blood clot forming or atherosclerotic plaque forming. Then as blood flows through that, it causes turbulent flow and that's these eddies that kind of circulate and disrupt our nice laminar flow. Um, and that can dramatically increase resistance because you've changed basically the radius of the blood vessel in that area, making then um, 
resistance much higher. Now to get the idea of uh, the effect that radius has, I want you to look at this diagram. The idea here is notice we've got two blood vessels or two vessels, tombs here. One has twice the radius of the other one. So this has a radius of two, this has a radius of just one. If I assume everything else about these guys is the same, because it is the same amount of pressure, fluid pushing in, it's the same fluid, so uh, viscosity is the same. So we can just assume everything else is the same, and we can simplify that resistance equation down to R being equivalent to 1 over R to the fourth, so the radius to the fourth. And then I just throw in the numbers here. So I've got for A, since the radius is 2, it's going to be 2 to the fourth. For B, the radius is 1, so it's 1 to the fourth. That ends up having a resistance value of 1. This one turns out to have a resistance value of 0.0625. That means, if we did look at the math, RB is equal to 16 times RA. That is that, that means then that flow in B is 1 16th that of flow in A. So that's huge. So just doubling the radius in A lowers the resistance by 16 times. So that's where the math comes in. Just a small change has a huge factor on overall resistance. Now I'm not going to expect you to do the math, I just want you to see that this change in radius is a huge change in resistance. So we're going to be done with this video. The next one we're going to look at then is starting to look at the regulation of blood pressure. So we're going to put everything together we've been doing about cardiovascular system in a series of lectures on how to regulate blood pressure. So we'll look at cardiac output, stroke volume, heart rate, blood volume, peripheral resistance, all these things we've been talking about uh, because we want to be able to control blood pressure.